Hi, I'm Rev Myron. I'm a minister through Pathways of Light. And I've been a Course in Miracles student for 40 years now. This year I'm going through the lessons and I am um, asking Jesus for clarity and then I'm sharing what I wrote. And so that's what I'm sharing with you today. So let's get started. We're looking at lesson 73. I will there be light. Today we are considering the will you share with God. This is not the same as the ego's idle wishes out of which darkness and nothingness arise. The will you share with God has all the power of creation in it. The ego's idle wishes are unshared and therefore have no power at all. Its wishes are not idle in the sense that they can make a world of illusions in which your belief can be very strong. But they are idle indeed in terms of creation. They make nothing that is real. The darkness and nothingness that arise is a world of our wishes. It's not creation because it's not the will we share with God that makes this world. Because our idle wishes are not shared, they have no power to create. They make images that we can see with the body's eyes, but they're not real. It is only our belief in them that makes them seem as if they are. Paragraph two, idle wishes and grievances are partners or co-makers in picturing the world you see. The wishes of the ego give rise to it and the ego's need for grievances, which are necessary to maintain it, peoples it with figures that seem to attack you and call for righteous judgment. These figures become the middlemen the ego employs to traffic in grievances. They stand between your awareness of your brother's and your brother's reality. Beholding them, you do not know your brothers or yourself. Our desire for something impossible, that is separation and specialness, brought the world into our mind. Because of our strong belief in what we made up, it appears very real to us. If it were not for our grievances, the truth would dawn on our mind and the world would disappear from it. In order to maintain the world, we need our grievances. And so we people it and imagine they are attacking us. These attacks seem to call for righteous judgment. As long as we keep buying into this, we will not know our brothers or ourselves. Paragraph three. Your will is lost to you in this strange bordering in which guilt is traded back and forth and grievances increase with each exchange. Can such a world have been created by the will the Father of God, uh, sorry, by the will the Son of God shares with his Father? Did God create disaster for his Son? Creation is a will of both together. Would God create a world that kills himself? I've always appreciated the first sentence in which he talks about this strange bordering in which guilt is traded back and forth and grievances increase. I appreciate it because I can see how true it is. Looking at my last marriage, I see how this was done. We kept trading grievances and in so doing, we wound up with nothing but grievances. Who can be aware of love with grievances blocking it in this way? Though it was done after the marriage had ended and forgiving these grievances, I came to love him again. I have since learned to be vigilant for thoughts of grievances and to release them to the Holy Spirit quickly. I understand now that God did not create such a world as this and therefore it cannot be real. If the grievances are not real, there's no reason for me to believe in them. And so they're easy to release. And knowing that God did not create this world, it is easy to accept that it is but a figment of my imagination. The world does not exist in our minds. It is just an image of a thought we hold and believe. As it says in lesson 15, my thoughts are images that I have made. It is because the thoughts you think you think appears images that you do not recognize them as nothing 
You think you think them, and so you think you see them. These thoughts I think I think are not thoughts with God. So what they produce is not reality. Paragraph four. Today we will try once more to teach the world that it is in accordance with your will. The light is in it because it does not oppose the will of God. It is not heaven, but the light of heaven shines on it. Darkness is finished. The ego's idle wishes have been withdrawn. Yet the light that shines upon this world reflects your will. And so it must be in you that we will look for it. Paragraph five, your picture of the world can only mirror what is within. The source of neither light nor darkness, darkness can be found without. Grievances darken your mind and you look out on a darkened world. Forgiveness lifts the darkness, reasserts your will and lets you look upon a world of light. We have repeatedly emphasized that the barrier of grievances is easily passed and cannot stand between you and your salvation. The reason is very simple. Do you really want to be in hell? Do you really want to weep and suffer and die? So we're trying to reach the real world, the world we made before we condemned it with our guilt and fear. We can do this because the dark world we are experiencing now is the effect of the dark thoughts in our mind. As we forgive our grievances, the mind is lightened. And so the images we make reflect that light. Jesus asked us to consider if we really want to be in hell. Do you really want to weep and suffer and die? No, of course we do not. That is why we will succeed. Our true will is God's will and must prevail. Paragraph six, forget the ego's arguments which seek to prove all this is really heaven. You know it is not. You cannot want this for yourself. There is a point beyond which illusions cannot go. Suffering is not happiness and it is happiness you really want. Such is your will and truth. And so salvation is your will as well. You want to succeed in what we are trying to do today. We undertake it with your blessing and your glad accord. We cannot have grievances and also have happiness. Happiness is what we want, and so all grievances must be forgiven. We cannot make exceptions and at the same time live the happy dream. If I discover that I am justifying a grievance, I change my mind. There is no justification for a grievance. While I was married, I felt like my grievances against my husband were justified. Others agreed with me and that reinforced my belief. When I forgave that relationship, it became clear to me that I was much happier without the grievances. I completely lost interest in them and I learned a valuable lesson in so doing. When Putin invaded Ukraine, I had a grievance and it certainly seemed justified, but I quickly released it. I've learned my lesson about grievances. They only cause suffering to me and the rest of the sonship. Paragraph seven, we will succeed today if you remember that you want salvation for yourself. You want to accept God's plan because you share in it. You have no will that can really oppose it, and you do not want to do so. Salvation is for you. Above all else, you want the freedom to remember who you really are. Today, it is the ego that stands powerless before your will. Your will is free, and nothing can prevail against it. Paragraph eight. Therefore, we undertake the exercises for today in happy confidence. Certain we will find what it is your will to find and remember that it is your will to remember what it is your will to remember. No idle wishes can detain us nor deceive us with an illusion of strength. Today, let your will be done and in forever the insane belief that it is hell in place of heaven that you choose. Someone I love is suffering right now. I can join him in his suffering or I can just hold the truth in my mind and let his experience unfold. The ego argues that if I really loved him, I would be worried and afraid for him. 
I would certainly care that he is suffering. I can't see where suffering with him is going to help me, nor where not suffering from him will hurt him. So where's the value in that choice? When I notice a fear thought or worry thought about him, I release it to the Holy Spirit. No idle wishes can detain us nor deceive us with an illusion of strength. Today, the ego stands powerless before my will. This is a decision that is not done and done. The decision for God is a decision I must make with each thought. Paragraph nine. We will begin our longer practice periods with the recognition that God's plan for salvation and only his is wholly in accord with your will. It is not the purpose of an alien will thrust upon you unwillingly. It is the one purpose here on which you and your father are in perfect accord. You will succeed today, the time appointed for the release of the son of God from hell and from all idle wishes. His will is now restored to his awareness. He is willing this very day to look upon the light in him and be saved. Why not today? Why not now? Today can be the day appointed for the release of the Son of God from hell. It's up to me. In the manual for teachers, it says this about the end of time. As the Course emphasizes, you are not free to choose the curriculum or even the form in which you learn it. You are free, however, to decide when you want to learn it. And as you accept it, it is already learned. This is in the manual for teacher section two, paragraph three. That is all we're doing, accepting that what has already been learned. We can do this and we will do it according to what we truly desire. I accept as fully as I can and forgive myself for what I cannot yet accept. This prepares me for the next effort and makes all following decisions more easily accepted. I'm not alone in this. The Christ joins me in this because it is a joint will of God and of us. Paragraph 10. After reminding yourself of this and determining to keep your will clearly in mind, tell yourself with gentle firmness and quiet certainty, I will there be light. Let me behold the light that reflects God's will in mine. Then let your will assert itself joined with the power of God and united with your self, your true self. Put the rest of the practice period under their guidance. Join with them as they lead the way. In the shorter practice periods, again, make a decision of what you really want. Say, I will there be light. Darkness is not my will. This should be repeated several times an hour. It is most important, however, to apply today's idea in this form immediately. You are tempted to hold a grievance of any kind. This will help you let your grievances go instead of cherishing them and hiding them in darkness. I do well for light and darkness is not my will. I know this now and I know it forever. If dark thoughts show up in my mind, I only need to remind myself of what I truly want. I remind myself of my decision. I join with the Christ in the will I share with God and let them guide me in my practice and in my life. Thank you so much for sharing this lesson with me and for watching my video. If it was helpful to you, then please like it. And if you haven't yet, subscribe. And I will be back tomorrow with another lesson.